Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode we're going to be talking about how to generate design ideas. Now this can be a tricky subject for a lot of students. So I'm going to show you my techniques and what I would do for generating design ideas and hopefully that gives you some tips at home. Let's get started. All right, as you can see, I've got a design page here that I've already done for you. I'm going to show you in a moment the time lapse of me generating those design ideas, and I'm going to walk you through the process. Now, in keeping with the guidelines and rules set out by our exam board, I've made sure that I've not talked about the live contextual challenges in my designs. So this is a design based on a soap dispenser to dispense hand sanitizer to NHS staff or people at home, or something like that. Okay, let's have a look at this time lapse. So it's been sped up so I can just whisk through this. Now, importantly here, you can see that I'm just doing two dimensional drawings. I'm just sketching out the form, the shapes that I might be interested in. Now, interestingly, I do a curved shape instead of these quite straight edges, which leads me on to this handle idea. I then try and create it in a little two point perspective drawing. And from there, I think actually I'm gonna generate more innovative ideas so I go for this handle idea I even then link about the trigger of the handle and I link that to the idea of maybe uh, being able to distribute it with one hand I do a little exploded diagram in the bottom corner you'll notice and that just goes through the different parts I then just whipped around each idea and just given a point that I want to explain to the viewer so rubber grip for extra hold uh, this container has got a screw thread etc and then with a little bit of spare space I go back and do a little design idea there okay now that's gonna get me on to my next stage if we have a good look at what I've done here you can see there's a flow so I've got this idea here and this idea here born out of that design so it was those curves here and here that gave me the idea for this idea which then made me go back to this design down here and it's this shape here that I start to try and create over there. So I'm using those little initial sketches that not not that important. In fact, that one never comes back again. That one doesn't, that one doesn't, nor does that. So out of those maybe six little thumbnails, took about three minutes to sketch loosely, I chose two of them and developed them. Now that's great because it shows a flow it shows a story from here to here and then it goes down to there so I'm starting to see this flow in my designs and from here I added a little feature so I've got this little thing down here for measuring how much soap is left inside perhaps and then I went on like I said to do this trigger design now the trigger design could be something that you use for if you're squirting hand sanitizer into someone else's hands maybe and from there I do a little exploded view this is this thing where I just show you all the different parts that I think you might make it from. And again, my, my labeling is very brief at this stage. It's just telling you what each bit's going to do and what each part is. I do a little 3D sketch of that. And I then have a little bit of fun by creating a hand grenade. Now, the thought process behind that was that I had this, this sort of handle here, which could have been for like a, a pistol or something. And then I had this trigger. And again, it was sort of going down this military route. And then I just thought, well, if we're going down a military route, maybe I'll go for like a, a hand grenade or something like that. And that generated these two little ideas. And I did a third idea, and I quite like this one. And it became the soap bomb. And that's that's how that sort of all generated. All the way from this little crude sketch here to ending up with this design. And it all flows like that. Now, you'll find this happens naturally. Don't get stuck with it. Don't get bogged down. Don't think, oh, I can't draw, I can't draw, I can't do it, I can't do it just start sketching at the top in the corner like I did up here and eventually you can go all the way across you might end up with a page full of them you might have 20 30 of these little thumbnails and that's okay because two or three of those thumbnails are going to be ideas you think actually let's explore that in a little bit more detail let's have a look at it in the 3d shapes okay so I'm gonna draw that to a close just there and of course you probably saw the start of my let's open up another layer you probably saw the start of my graphics head coming on where I started to go around the outside like this and then I would color those in just to draw the eye to your 
to that design. If it's something that I want you to have a look at, I'll make sure that I put a little background in like this. Just so, oops, missed. Just so that I'm showing you that, okay, this is an important part of my design page. This is an important part of my design page. These are the bits I want you to focus on. Right, okay. Now let's talk about design annotation. Because design annotation is massively important. And it's something that I can guide you with here. And this will help with the explanation. So it will allow you to get to the top marks banding for the design section. Now this is my annotation checklist. If it was me and I was a student watching this video, I'd pause it at this point and I'd probably either copy that down into my pages so that I can literally tick it off or I'd go back to this video and refer back to that. But a checklist is nice when you can check it off. So let's imagine that I've got my little bath bomb design like so and these are the things I'm going to need to talk about so how well does it respond to the design brief well if the design brief says that it's got to appeal to a teenage target market I can then do a little chat about it here and I can say well it's going to talk about the fact that it links into the military theme which is very popular at the moment with things like Fortnite and Warzone etc so teenagers are wanting to go and pick this up and have a look at it and then they're going to start hand sanitizing their hands which is brilliant for uh, increasing awareness of, of uh, general hygiene so I can talk about that there how well does it meet your specification points remember that video we looked at previously the specification those points that we said it must do this it must do that they're massive now we need to talk about those for each of our main ideas now I wouldn't do it for the whole page I wouldn't do it for those thumbnails they're not important but certainly for that idea and maybe one of my other ideas I would go into town and start talking about it now top tip from me is if I've got a spec point that talks about materials I might do it in red and I might go on to talk about sustainability and how I've made my product sustainable in blue etc etc you see where I'm going with this I might then talk about the the actual the function of the product and talk about how that works and do that in green maybe I've seen students in the past do it where they would write out all their annotation notes like this and then they would just come along with a little highlighter or a little marker like that and they just put a little blob of colour to say oh, I've talked about that I've talked about that and on the specification they've then gone back and colour coded it you could do it like that, you could do it with numbers, and you could just number each one and say, well, this is number one, this is talking about spec point number two, etc. So, just little tips there about meeting the spec points. Right, let's get my pink back. How well does your product appeal to other people? How do we answer that question? User group feedback is a massive part of this here. How are you going to appeal to them? Well, I've said already that I'm going to link it to video games to appeal to my target market. Am I explaining that over here somewhere? Make sure you're telling the viewer, the examiner, your teacher, how is that appealing? And it, it, it can be colour, it can be shape, it can be how comfortable it is. There's loads of ways in which a product is appealing to somebody. So, for example, glasses are brilliantly appealing for people who want to see further, etc. Um, will it be easy to use so how do I use the product if you say well okay I've got to go through uh, a little pit of fire uh, and then I've got to drop into a, a, a ball of spikes and, and all that kind of thing to get to my product it's not gonna be very easy to use is it um, equally if the handles too small or the product is too heavy to lift that's gonna make it not very easy to use so outline it if it isn't and you've made it too heavy or too small then you can say that this, this product's great, love the shape, love the designs, meets all my spec points, except for the fact it's not very easy to use. Well, now what? We develop it, yeah? So, even if it doesn't quite work, we can still talk about it. <clears throat> Does it have a better feature than other products? Now, you've done a product analysis, hopefully, in the investigation. You've looked at other existing products on the market. What's your product going to have, which is better than anybody else's? Does it come in a really nice, sleek, colored variation that's nowhere else on the market does it come in a packaging that no one else has got 
does it have a feature? Does it does it have a handle that people can use to lift it with? Sell us your idea and make sure you talk about it in your annotation. Could you make your product on a budget? Now this is a good point to start researching any material costs. If you haven't done this yet for your investigation, here's a fantastic opportunity to have a go at doing that. It's fairly straightforward. You would say, well, okay, I'm gonna use pine for this. I'm going to use uh, stainless steel for that. I'm gonna to have to source the stainless steel. It's going to cost me £3.99 or whatever. And do a costings list. You can then apply that to your design page. Okay. Have you thought about various materials and why pick those materials? So are you using pine, are you using oak? How are you gonna source the oak? Is it gonna be more expensive than the pine? Could you stain the pine? Those kind of things. Don't go into too much detail. You could just literally say, well, I'm gonna use pine here. And this bit's going to be made out of polypropylene. So just identify what those parts are. Can you explain how parts could be recycled, repurposed or reused? So that's the part where we start to talk about the sustainability. Now, from sustainability point of view, an example of that would be, I've got plastic and woods put together, but I'm going to screw the plastics on so that I can unscrew the plastics at the end of life and I can go and recycle the plastic and I can go and use the wood in a log burner or something else which is more sustainable. If you haven't made it sustainable, it's all glued together, then I can outline the fact that it's glued together. It's not going to lose your marks, but it makes your product less sustainable. But, again, an opportunity for development. What do you like about your idea? Fairly difficult to do at your level, because most of the time you're very highly critical of your designs. So you can talk about this bit, what you don't like about it, really easily. But talk about what you like about it. I like the fact that it's curved in this way to make it shape like a grenade. I could add extra little panels in there. Sell your idea. You're the designer. You're in charge. And celebrate your efforts. What do you what do you do to drive your product forward? Let's just take that one off. We've done that one. So is it going to be that the grenade's going to be the design that I'm going to do next? I'm going to develop that into a better idea later. Or is it an idea that's going to be left on the on the drawing room floor? Is it one of those original sketches that I did that ah, I'm not going to touch that again. So we can just go, no, this isn't an idea I want to take forward. This one, grenade, far too complicated. It's got a fingerprint scanner on it, all these kind of gadgets. Brilliant, but it's not feasible. So it's it's not going to get taken forward. And tell us that. Tell us that what is and what is going to make it to the next stage. An exciting opportunity to drive on to development. So they're my top tips for annotation. Let's wrap the video up and hopefully we'll be within 15 minutes. Keep it short, keep it sweet. Right, so what have we learned in today's session? We've looked at generating design ideas and I've shown you a personalized version of how I would generate ideas, starting in two dimensions first, then moving into a few 3D ideas and then developing parts of that idea into new ideas. It might be that you've got three or four different ideas you want to explore you might want to do that on different pages or you might want to put them on the same page. That's fine, it's entirely up to you. We've outlined how to award yourself the top marks for your designs by explaining your ideas through detailed annotation and using this checklist to support you with that will have a massive help and impact on your designs. Okay, so just in case you've missed the specification, you can click on our video up above us to hit that video and go back to see how we generate the specification points. And so you don't forget another video. And if you've enjoyed this one, click on my beautiful mug so that you can subscribe and you won't miss another video. Until next time, stay safe. Bye now. <laughs>